Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers, and thank you for joining us. We are going to get back on this little um, Tohatsu 18. Um, says on the side that it is a M18C2, so a 18C. Um, I looked on a few of the websites and it uh, kind of references a, a 1986. The motor has been sitting for years um, in an old shed full of yuck and a pile of other debris and uh, it looked the part so we're going to do some washing some cleaning some painting and uh, I'm going to show you the situation on that flywheel nut you understand and uh, the carburetor is off and I got it through the ultrasonic cleaner and um, my ultrasonic cleaner has a heater built right into the ultrasonic cleaner and when I flick that switch up on that heater um, it'll get up to about 200 um, I think it's 205 degrees and I don't have to go that hot I can just warm it up and cut the heater back off or whatever but in this case, I heated it up pretty good to get the fuel pump screws, which are part of the carburetor body on this particular uh, outboard. And I got, I got those screws out with a uh, little bit of the heat and the van pliers that have the teeth. And I was able to get those screws out. And surprisingly, the diaphragms, well, I mean, the whole carburetor inside looked good, but... The diaphragms didn't look really bad at all, neither one of them. So I'm just going to put a little Petroleus jelly on those and soften them up a little bit and go ahead and reuse them because they look really good. And the carburetor cleaned up nice. I got it all cleaned up. I'm going to screw it back together and get that on there. And then we've got to deal with some electrical problems. So after we get the carb all back together and on there we'll figure out the ignition on this thing so let's get started well some of you tohatsu goes on tight um aficionados may have known this all along and said that cody bass is a doofus because he don't even know that it's righty loosey, lefty tidy. I did not know that. But on the Tahatsu, because I'm tight, um, yeah, it's righty loosey, lefty tidy. So we'll get that flywheel off there now. And look under there. Let me get set up, I'll be back. Now. I've got my puller set up. I had to put a spacer in this bolt here because it's longer than the other two. And I didn't have a third one. Well, I do. I just didn't feel like digging around for it. But I've had folks ask me, won't you get yourself a proper puller? I assume you're talking about one of these universal pullers from uh, OMC. And they work fine. You got that handle you can hold on to. And you can see i got a whole bunch of other outboard specific specific pullers but I still find the center of this three leg puller my favorite that's me I like it but we're gonna use this one just wanted to show you I do own one I just like my little bitty one maybe because it's a cutie I don't know well now that we've got the flywheel nut loose and I figured out that it was righty loosey lefty tidy let's see what we get here I do have a piece of rope in the top cylinder to help me with this flywheel let's see what we get 
Oh yeah, she popped right off of her. <laughs> Thor! But even Thor can't pop off a bolt, a flywheel nut that's being torqued the wrong way. You'll understand. But I was wondering about that. When old Tor was having trouble, I was like, I need to just step back and think about it. And I said, I wonder if. And I wondered right. I wondered right. Yep. Universal. So they say. Righty Lucy. Okay, let's see what we got under. Hey! Let's look what we got under here. Not all that bad under there. It looks awful on the outside. But it's got the lightering coil and the charge coil. That's good. <laughs> no sticky, but that could be other things as well. Yeah. Get out my another special tool for popping off these plastic things. And there that goes. So now, oh yeah, it's not too bad. Clean that up a little bit. Clean that up a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and plug all these holes. There's my rope. And uh, it's bath time for this guy, so I'll be right back. Okay, what I got right here, see all the water in the bottom of it? See all that? It's just some old yucky gasoline. Because this thing has a lot of grease and just everything. And I'll come back with the soap. But... On this guy, it's so bad. I'm gonna give it a little bit of the old gas some treatment. And I cover it up with a plastic bag up under the flywheel st stuff. And I've got a rag sprayed with triflo in my carb intake hold. I put the plugs back in. But this thing has just got so much nasty that I want to get this old gas and loosen this stuff up that's been sitting in this engine for probably 20 plus years. That's something I found with these early Japanese imports and such is that, at least in my area, when, when they lose spark for whatever reason, they go in a shed or the dump a dumpster people just I don't know I don't know what the difference is but uh, it seems like on these maybe the different colored wires I'm not sure but when they lose spark they 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 get put away and then somebody will pull them out how many ever years later a lot of times and bring them to me and, hey can you get this running how much you want to spend buddy so I'm going to go over this with the gas, let it soak, go over a little more, and then I'll come back with some soap. I'll be back. Get this puppy cleaned up. Goodness gracious, I'm not... There's abuse, and then there's abuse. Boy, I think I'm going to have to get this motor some counseling after. Yeah, get this motor some counseling after that, uh, little bit of that PS, um, DP 
keep. Uh, it's going to need some counseling, I think. The amount of neglect and abuse. I'll have to call the services people, you know. Get them over here. Poor little thing. Get abused like that. So, now. I'm going to let, I'm going to work this soap into a lather. And then I'm going to let it sit about, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then, one more good rinse off, and I think we'll be ready. And then, of course, in the meantime, I got a flywheel. It's going to need some tension. But, that's what we're going to need to do. Put a good coat, and then I'll work that into a slather, slather it up good. And uh, once I slather it up good, I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes. I'll be back. Command thee, come out, salt. Come out of there. I command thee. Oh, come out, salt. I want that salt out of there. Okay, let me get, get off of there. I show you. Now, don't that look just a little bit better in there? Eh. Ain't that just so much prettier? 20 years out of that motor right there. Look at there, even got the original B7HS-10 or Champion L82C. Well, the old Tahatsu is coming along after I cleaned it up. I gave it a little, a little paint, just whatever I had on the shelf, that's charcoal gray it said. Match is good enough and compared to what we started with, she's coming along good. So I went and got out the manual and I looked up the 
flywheel nut torque specs and it says to go 40 to 55 foot pounds or 60 to 70 newton meters so I got my torque wrench set at 55 don't you just know and then I've got my piston stop inside the top cylinder which is also known as a piece of pull cord you're supposed to use a piston stop I got a piston stop I got several piston stops but I find not everybody does but that's what they look like if you're curious that screws into the spark plug hole see this one's two sizes and I got other ones for bigger spark plug holes but I just take a piece of old cord from an old pull cord that I have. One thing I generally do is when I take this old cord, piece of pull cord, I fold it in half. And then make sure the piston's down at bottom dead center, roughly, and shove this in. Now we got to remember on this Tohatsu Gesundheit. It's lefty tidy, righty loosey. So I've got it all set up and listen, you'll hear a click. Uh oh. That's 55. So we're set there. And then loosen the flywheel the other way and pull out your cord. Ain't no piece of string going to stand up what goes on inside that chamber. They may get a little stuck. You just turn the flywheel a little bit, jerk, jerk, little, little quick jerk, so it'll come out. That piece of string will come out. So we got the flywheel on. We got the old carburetor all cleaned up. And uh, all the butterfly flippy things are nice and loosey now. So we got some ignition things we got to do oh and that recoil starter well you know what i did with that same thing i do with all of them did i mention that in my outboard tank i got some nitric acid you know salt away i got a little bit of glycol and then all the good lubricants that spit out them old nasty two-stroke exhaust. That's where that pulls. When they're as salty like you've seen this one, they go right into the yummy. And then I'll clean it up some more. But it, it likes it in there. It's like scrubbing its armpits and everything. It really likes it in the old tank because all the goodies are in the tank. I'll be back. Now you know this pull cord that's in this outboard has been sitting for 15, 20 years too. So we'll use that as a piston stop and put some new pull cord in this puppy. Because Come on out of there. There it comes. Tie us a knot. I'm just going to tie an overhand knot. And cinch it up there. This one I'll tie a figure eight in. Why not? <laughs> Alright. Just get that one down in there. Boom. There we go. Hold it there, keep the tension on it, and slowly. Now look at there, it don't hardly pull in that new rope. 
Well, we all know how to fix that. That's what that little cutout right there is for. We put a couple extra turns on that spring a lang a lang. See that cutout right there? We take some tweezers or something. There we go. Put that up there. Put it in that cutout right there. I guess I should be showing you that. See, there's a little cutout right there. Right there in the sheave. We take that, put about two more turns. One and two. We can do it. Oh, come on, you. There we go. So now she's good. We'll get that back on here in a bit. Okay, we are now at the ignition portion in our novel of the old Tohatsu. Um, I'm using one of these, one of those, not the best manual for sure, but in the simplicity of this little small 18 horsepower, it's all I needed. Um, it don't even really mention in here this exact motor. It talks about the 9.9, 15, and 18 horsepower two-stroke motors. And it says they will vary slightly in model. Then it says... For the 9.9C, the 15C, and the 18D, Delta. Well, I look down here and it talks about the 15D two-stroke and the 18E two-stroke models. This is an 18C. Here was the, the important part. Expect a cranking output of 100 to 150 volts. Um, so that gave me a generalized ballpark area that I needed for testing that exciter coil. But uh, so then, and I'll show you this, um, I looked over the coil real good and the little clips I needed to clip things on to test it on my Stevens. Uh, instrument coil tester it wasn't there and then so I looked at the wiring coming from the CDI box and the little tang that is hooked to the coil for the hot wire was still in the little push on plastic thing from coming from the CD uh, CDI box so I took needle nose and pulled it out and then I put it on that coil and I said yep that's where it was okay you should be able to see a little bit of solder right there. See where I soldered it? And then I was able to hook up the wire, the black wire with the yellow stripe from the CDI box. So now the coil and the CDI box are wired together and I grounded it to the block. This is just a temporary setup so I could check and make sure I had spark. But now I'm going to take some JB Weld and cover all this right here so it don't rip back out. And that's where I soldered it and then I put a big mound of JB Weld over that and then I put two little zip ties here and married it to this to the spark plug wire itself and then I put some tape here to make sure it stays. And uh, then I hooked up the CDI box as designed. I painted everything there. 
and we got the old sparky spider on there and and okay so these are my two wires going to the spark so look right there So we got some Spocky. We got some Spocky Wacky on the Spocky Spider. Heck, this one right here was actually even jumping over there. <laughs> but it's got good hot spark now. And uh, it sure looks a lot better after being all cleaned up. this back over here okay so we got the carburetor back on um, we got everything looking good all the wires in pretty nice order got to get the recoil back on and uh, so the CDI and the coil are good and I do believe that tang breaking off on this motor was probably almost its death at least its death for a decade and a half if not more so we've got good compression us we've got good spark and we need to get the recoil and then I got to do look at this tiller real quick and see how that's gonna pan out I'll be back okay I got the tiller handle off it was held on there on each side by these shouldered uh, non-threaded bolts and then the threads only well not even half the length so one on each side um, threads right into the handle and this part of the tiller handle is nice and free but the part that went to the actual power head um, it's just almost a solid chunk of rust and this bushing in here well actually it's more than a it's a combination of a bushing slant bar the knuckle itself and uh, don't want to damage that so what I'm going to do I'm not sure if this will fit let me check I don't know if there's a eclip C clip that kind of fits in there, so I'm going to get my tappet hammer here. Oh yeah, it's coming up. Are you? Oh, I dropped it. Ugh. So everything's just all stuck, dude. Yeah, you're in there. See this knuckle right here? Coming in from behind. Well... Someday I'm going to be able to hold on to it. Not yet. Well, that's as much as, much as I'm going to get with that thing. So, let's see what else we can tap with. I don't want to crack that plastic. So let me get a long punch with a flat tip, you know, something like that, you know, you know. We can't finish tapping that out of there. Come on now. Hey! There it is, I'm a winner, I'm a winner. So we'll clean up that hole, get that back in. I will take this which is what actually advances the mag plate through linkage. I'll show you that in a little bit. And clean this up on my coarse wire wheel, bench coarse wire wheel. And uh, then I'll give it a coat of paint. Let that dry and we'll put all this part back together. Yep, we are making good progress on this little Tahatsu. Um, we've got uh, the ignition straightened out soldered up some wires and a coil and we've got her cleaned about as good as I think I can clean one um, 
We got the Ocabrepa all cleaned up. Looks good inside. Fuel pumps all cleaned up. Looks good. Uh, got most of the pieces and parts um, back on. A couple things I still have to do. I have to come up with a fuel connection. It's got the older style round Tahatsu uh, on there and I do not have one and the one that's on there has a plastic piece in the middle that's spring-loaded that looks to be broken. So I have to come up with uh, some way to hook a quick connect up to it and one thing I've seen on this little motor is there is quite a bit of brass uh, things in there and I'll burnt that out to you here in a bit but before I can get this thing wrapped back up and get it in a tank and see if it runs I have to I have to do my duty a friend of mine went fishing and he brought me some beautiful fish so I have to take care of those do you want to see what they are? I'll show you. Let's go. Well now. My buddy George went fishing today with his gill net. And he brought me some yummy. I'll get those all cleaned up and ready for the smoker. You know they're going to be good. Likes me some smoked salmon. Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm going to have to take care of those fish and, uh, get them all ready and cleaned and probably ready for my smoker and uh, so this video is getting a little long and we're going to go ahead and call that a wrap that is one more hack from the Kodiak thank you for watching please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host Cody Bass.